All right, before I cook with olive oil, I'm gonna um, do my favorite skincare regimen. So what I'm doing with my skin is putting olive oil all over it before every video we shoot. And then cooking with olive oil inside and out, though it just makes sense. Just goes with the whole, goes with the whole flow. And then I'm gonna skid out of here. Today's video is about white pesto. The less famous but equally captivating cousin of pesto alla genovese. But pesto actually just means pounded. So you would put your basil and your cheese and your nuts and your thing and you would pound them in um, the mortar and pestle pounded sauce. Then people started making them in food processors because that is easier, but not the same. And the irony of my pesto is that um, it's not pounded at all and I don't use a mortar and pestle either. So figure that out. Here's some walnuts. This white pesto is made with ricotta, walnuts, parm, oregano, and lemon. The first thing I want to do is um, toast the nuts, which really brings out their flavor and changes their texture. So they're going in the oven. So normal pesto, green pesto, pesto alla genovese, is a lot of basil with a little bit of nuts, pine nuts, and parm and olive oil. Oregano in small quantities actually packs quite a bit of a punch. There's like more oils coming out of an oregano leaf. And so by only using a little bit, you actually get a lot of flavor. Great, let's check on the nuts, shall we? Okay, so they're darker in color. They smell nutty. And um, if you cut one in half, you'll see that they're kind of golden brown in the center instead of how they were like just pale white at the very beginning. The walnuts aren't getting cooked again. So I want them to have, be their best selves. So those are gonna cool off, but I am gonna put the pasta in the water. This is a pound of bucatini. Our recipes are gonna say to cook the pasta in heavily salted boiling water. And that means like a good amount of salt. You guys have seen us do this before, but I would say a quarter cup or more is not a crazy amount. You can use any long pasta for this, like spaghetti, thick spaghetti, bucatini, linguine, paracatelli. You could also use rigatoni, fusilli, radiatore. You could really use whatever, just don't use like, don't use a tiny little shape like didalini. And for the love of God, do not use angel hair. All right, Bucatini's going. It's gonna take, I don't know, nine minutes or something. It's a good thing to set a timer because there's literally, the only thing worse than not salting your pasta water is um, overcooking your pasta. I'd rather have it undercooked than overcooked. It's a true crime. And so the cheese for the white pesto is really based on ricotta, which is pretty sweet, not that salty, has a little bit of lacticness, but it's creamy and um, it sort of, it doesn't exactly melt, but it will emulsify into the sauce really nicely. To balance that and give more structure and um, just more flavor, I paired it with um, parm, which recipe calls for two ounces, hmm, 1.2. And the Parmesan is gonna give two and a half ounces. Should we just go with it? because there's gonna be a little nub that I'm not gonna be able to grate. Um, you could do this in your Cuisinart or your Vitamix or um, whatever. I'm gonna just grate it by hand. So the parm is adding saltiness, richness. It melts in a different way. It's gonna help hold everything together. And it's only a couple ounces, so I'm gonna just grate it right in to the ricots, the rigots. In my heart of hearts, I'm gonna just be totally honest. In my heart of hearts, I wanted to develop this recipe in a mortar and pestle, but I knew that everyone except for Andy Baragani doesn't necessarily have a mortar and pestle, and I didn't want to alienate anyone, and I didn't want to write a recipe that was going to be like, oh, bon appetit is so annoying. They like think that everybody has mortar and pestle just because Andy has mortar and pestle, but it's just the part where the walnut 
and the garlic would be smashed together in the mortar and pestle with salt and it would abrade it and it would break it all apart and then you would add a little olive oil to that. And I just have this idea that like the old fashioned way of doing it, that things were more delicious in the olden days because people were working harder for it. But what if actually it's the same and it's just more convenient? This is two teaspoons of oregano. It was a little bit more. It seems a waste not to use it. So I'm just gonna use it. And then the real truth is, with or without the pestle, not to be confused with pestilence, which was also a thing that ran rampant through the olden times, is um, I could get out the food processor to do this. We certainly have plenty of food processors, but then you have to wash that whole rigmarole and it's only for this amount of nuts. But I also am invested for the idea that some of these bits of nuts are gonna be really tiny and some of the bits of nuts are gonna be a little bit bigger. And then there's going to be like more texture. That didn't take so long. And really you could do this for as long as it takes the pasta to cook because it's the only other thing you have to do. So you can see there's, you know, some of this is very powdery and some of this is in like slightly larger pieces. And um, I'm down with that. You're just going to run that mixer this whole time or? <laughs> it's like having a truck. You didn't say though that it was going to run for like 25 minutes. <laughs> I, can, I can move it. If it's okay. It's like having a truck idling outside your apartment and like you don't realize it's there until it turns off. Drilling These are not there. done. They're very resilient still. When I was in Italy, I was amazed at how al, their al dente was. I mean, it was... Borderline crunchy. I really like it that way. So this is my fancy French chef trick that I learned from a fancy French chef. Instead of scooping the nuts into the bowl, which is inefficient, voila, bingo bango. Need the zest of a lemon. Wouldn't it be great if we had a Sicilian lemon? They're giant, the Sicilian lemon, and they have very aromatic um, peels. I'm doing it the Martha way, where you collect the zest on the top of the microplane. Apparently that's how you're supposed to do it. Never did it this way my whole life. Everybody see Brad in the background? We haven't done a Brad in the background joke for a while. Because Brad's been in like, been like Texas. He's, been, he's, been, in he's been in the way back. Um, zest of a lemon. Whole garlic clove. All right, so if you're sensitive to raw garlic, like my little sister, um, do a small clove to half a clove. I think it's important, this garlic, this little bit of raw garlic, because we're cutting through all that dairy, giving a little bit of heat, a little bit of bite, a little bit of freshness, a little bit of peppery. It's not that much. And then the other thing that's gonna happen, the whole sauce is gonna happen inside of this bowl. So I'm gonna mix these things together, and then I'm gonna add the olive oil. I like to mix all the things together the ricotta, the walnuts, the lemon, the garlic, the oregano. Everybody's in there. And then add the oil. I think if you had the olive oil in there at the beginning, it might coat some of the ingredients. So in my mind, it would be like clumping around the ricotta and preventing the ricotta from getting to know all of his dairy fatty sisters, you know? And then I'm adding this like a tablespoon at a time I did it where I added it all at once and it was just like the olive oil, there was like an olive oil swimming pool and it just took, it was harder to emulsify. Sometimes you interview chefs about why they do stuff and they're like, oh, I don't know, it's just the way I do it. That's how I feel right now. I could just add the rest of it. This feels emulsified, it's not seasoned yet, but I have pasta timer problems. Pasta clock is a clock. Oh, that pasta clock, she's a ticking. I'm going with it now. Woo! That's a long noodle. Mmm. Okay, so it's really just about there. Turning it off. You can't really see it. There's a tiny white point in the center of the noodle of the uncooked pasta. And when you bite into it, it's just impossible to see. You just have to take my word for it. It's like 
the walls of the tunnel where that hole is are a little bit whiter than the rest of the noodle. And that's that little al dente point. All right, that was a good amount of pepper. Again, with so few ingredients, like all of them are kind of there for a reason and you should be able to taste them. I'm gonna add one cup of pasta cooking liquid to this. It is going to look like a soupy, watery mess. It's gonna look wrong and bad. And uh, I made this a few times, so you just have to trust me that I did it and it all worked out in the end. This hot water is loosening the sauce, obviously. The heat, this gentle heat, is blooming all of the aromatic essences and compounds in the oregano. It's softening the cheese so it's gonna emulsify better. So it's really, like, key. It's really doing something. There's chemistry and all kinds of magic happening over there. Would you rather an undercooked egg or an overcooked egg? Over. Oh. 100%. <laughs> Wet whites? No way. <laughs> All right, especially about food. So. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> Under all the time. <laughs> Under, thank whites. you. Thank you, Chris. Oh. Even the whites. Come on, soft boiled egg. I mean, Ali, you could like keep going. If it's over, it's over. All right, nudes, beautiful bucatini right into the bowl. I want some of that water clinging. I'm really after the heat of the pasta here. So now is another moment of, of trust. Just follow, I need blind following. So the recipe says to toss vigorously the pasta with this little sauce mixture that you've made in your bowl, your white pesto. And you're gonna do it and you're gonna be like, that crazy lady once again has given me a watery sauce. It's gonna take two minutes before the pasta, the pasta water, the heat, the cheese, and the oil are all getting to know each other in this starchy pasta water emulsified place and you will have to keep going. Two minutes is long enough to feel it in your shoulder. So remember how watery that was before? Now look at her. She is a creamy emulsified magic mess of beauty and realization of handmade goodness. And then at a certain point it's like, stop tossing because the sauce might actually get too thick. All right, now I think we should taste it before we serve it. So the sauce at this point is voluminous and looks generous and is generously coating and there's a little bit of sliding going around. It's not too tight, it's not too loose, it's coating all the strands. There's a little more pepper. It's zingy from that lemon. No juice, just the zest. Great, great stuff. You can use, now you can use that whole lemon for something else. And if it was a Sicilian lemon that doesn't have any juice, then you're really in luck because you use the best part of it. I need a plate. <laughs> can we pause for a second? I need a little more splash. Pause. This is a thing you can do with your own judgment. The sauce got so emulsified and creamy that I actually want to loosen it up a tiny bit. You have all that pasta water left, so you can do that. That looks better. That looks better, it's more saucy. Also, different noodles absorb um, liquid from a sauce differently. Please join me for pasta. <laughs> we thought you'd never ask. A little parm, a lady? Yes, please. If you wanted to find out if, if the people from yesteryear we're having a better life despite having a harder life. You would smash together the walnuts, the garlic, the salt, and some of the olive oil, and the parm, if life, if life was harder and yet more delicious. I mean, you wouldn't have a phone in the old times, <laughs> so I guess it's more just like you need a, you need a hobby to fill in all those hours. So, sure. Right, 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 right. They had around. a ton of time on their hands with <laughs> The whole day is in front of me. How can I make my chores take longer? <laughs> yeah, let's go churn some butter. <laughs> Throw the phone away, get rid of the food processor, and just, you know, do it by hand. It's delicious. Delicious. Right?
what else are you gonna do? Yeah, what else are you gonna do? Yeah, we're really going on a on a rainbow's journey of pestos recently, <laughs> right? Yeah. Did you do the red one? No, Molly did the red one. Yeah, Molly did the red. I haven't white. had it yet. The What's red, the white, on? and the green. Oh, the, the Italian red, the flag. The red was very delicious. That was like spicy, and mm. it was like a whole other vibe. So you're saying the red pesto was better than the white pesto? Was it pounded? Was it pounded? <laughs> I think it was pounded. Oh my God, she's got me. Um, cool. Cool. Well, I'll just eat my, I'm happy with my nuts and cheese. I'm happy with my nuts and cheese. Mm. Hand chopping forever. <laughs>